think he's about a 1A class, typical. So that is the end of my 2013 whitetail season. He's a pretty cool buck and uh, he didn't go very far and he went down. That is an unbelievable deer. <laughs> you caught him. My passion for deer hunting doesn't necessarily come from the hunting part. Rather, what I love is the scouting, the setting up and the filming, and the look on a hunter's face just moments after they've taken that deer of their dreams. And that's what I choose to focus on. But every now and then there's a special deer that I want to get in and take a closer look at. And the guys are never far behind, putting the pressure on me to get some hunting time for myself. In my life I've had the opportunity to take several deer that I would have never even dreamed of having the opportunity to hunt. Holy moly, <laughs> he's as big as we thought he was. Yeah. Well, congratulations on a great deer. Thanks, man. Yeah, he's beautiful. I'm happy. He's just a wonderful deer. This is four years we've seen him now, hey? Got the sheds off him from last year. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what a beautiful deer. Yeah. the biggest buck of my life. Biggest deer I'll ever hunt, I imagine. And although I still appreciate every deer that I go after, I've developed even more enjoyment helping others to have those same experiences that I've been blessed with. Sharing that passion for scouting and setting up and the results that you can achieve is the ultimate in fulfillment for me. Anyway, congratulations. I'm I'm glad glad thanks, buddy. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. everything. Yeah. Beautiful deer. Congratulations, son. Super happy for you, bud. Thank you. Um, I couldn't be happier. Congrats again, man. We're going to go back after the Y5 that, that he missed last Tuesday. Good job, buddy. Thanks, Steve. Got her done. Congratulations, bud. That's, thanks. That's a deer of a lifetime right there. By doing so and taking other hunters out, that consumes most of my fall, and I'll wait to hunt myself until the last few weeks, if there's time, and a deer that I want to go after. This year there was just such a deer that I'd largely ignored for almost two years, and now nearly two months into the 2013 season, the crew here had had enough, and said it was time that I'd better get in and go after the deer, and he was a buck that we had simply called the Big Show. What are we doing tonight, Richie? Chasing the big show. It's October 23rd, and this is actually the first night of the year that I'm hunting. And that's because there's a pretty big deer here that we've known about for three years now. We had pictures of him, and uh, I watched him a little bit last year after I was tagged out. And there uh, seems to be a few guys that know about the deer. And to be honest, that's why we haven't really been hunting him, because there's a couple guys that I've been kind of rooting for that they would get the deer. They don't have permission to hunt here, and Richie said enough's enough. We've got to go take a look at him, so. We think he's about a 180 class, typical. When we pulled up, I was actually talking to the one and only Cody Robbins, too. And he knows about this deer that 
We've talked about it for a couple of years and he said, if I don't shoot it, he's never gonna talk to me again. So there's all this pressure. You don't understand the pressure that everybody wants you to go shoot a boon and crocodile whitetail. And I'm saying that we should just film the deer. But we'll see. What I meant by rooting for another hunter to get the buck was that one of those hunters in particular was consumed with the deer. And we'd even offered the other hunter to come and hunt our setup and have a chance at taking the big show buck. As all September and early October, week after week, we'd pull the card from the Spot Point trail camera and it would show good daylight activity and opportunities to take him. And we could only wait so long before going in to have a look for ourselves. The first night only produced a few does and small bucks, so we packed up to head out for the evening. The next day with the right wind, we were headed back hoping to get a look at the big show. Again, deer sightings were minimal and we were getting wrapped up for the evening. And then it happened. The big show made an appearance. Richie and I checked the time and it was still within legal shooting. And we looked at the deer and he was absolutely huge. But with no quality footage, we had to let him walk. It was now late November with about another 15 days after the big show, still with no encounters. However, there was something else very wrong. The Big Show had been missing since November 1st, opening day of gun season, and after three years of him not going missing for more than a day or two, well, we were starting to realize that he may have been taken or wounded, we had not heard anything. Usually if a deer of this caliber is taken, word travels fast, but still no word. So until confirmed, you can never give up. Shortly into the evening, this old, over-the-hill buck made an appearance, and however not a deer that I wanted to shoot, it's still nice to see some of these bucks get to that upper age class. Shortly after, this young but good looking mule deer comes by, and he was actually a deer that I'd filmed scouting earlier in the season with a bigger, much older muley buck with a flyer out the side. No doubt it's late season now. I got a toque. So we're at day, I don't want to know. Um, our 
original target buck hasn't been back. We're not sure that he's uh, been taken yet by another hunter, so he can't give up and uh, we're doing everything we can to find him. After a couple of small whitetails, the bigger muley with the flyer that I'd mentioned filming in the summer made an appearance. And being 99% certain that our target buck was now gone, I thought about taking this muley buck. However, he was hot on a doe and never offered me a shot. It's day I don't even know anymore. Uh, still cold. It's minus 24 today. It's minus 32 uh, with the wind chill Celsius. That's okay. It's my favorite time to hunt deer. After the nice young up and comer I looked up and again there was a flyer tine muley buck following a doe. But this time the doe was bringing him right to me. This Before the break the muley buck that we filmed back in August had followed a doe to within 20 yards of my blind and I had a mule deer tag in my pocket. So that is the end of my 2013 whitetail season. That's also the first mule deer I've ever shot. And uh, we've seen him yesterday and the whitetail that I was here hunting, uh, he's been gone for 21 days. So. That's pretty cool, he didn't go very far and he went down. He doesn't have any front forks, but he's a pretty cool old buck and uh, that's pretty neat. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> he killed a mule deer. It's a mule deer. <laughs> I told you I had big G2s. You said you never were going to kill a mule deer. That's a nice mule deer. Look at that big sticker out the side. So, okay, tell us the story. <laughs> oh my god, I'm speechless. Truth is, I mean, I bug these guys, you know, a lot. I mean, Jason and some of the other guys are, are hardcore muley guys, and I get it. Well, I don't get it, but, you know, we, we bug them a lot, and they should be spending time looking for whitetails and scouting for whitetails, and it's all in good fun. I mean, there's no disrespect to this deer. I mean, he's a gorgeous animal. You know, I'm pumped to have shot him. He's a beautiful, pretty old buck. He's been around there for years, and uh, so it's nothing against mule deer. It's just they should spend more time hunting whitetails. <laughs> well, you did get your first mule deer, so yeah. uh, that's pretty cool. What all, it, I could, all I could say is I'm shocked. I've known this guy since he was a wee little fella. And believe it or not, he was a wee little fella at one time. And mule deer were never on his menu. Yeah. 
happened. Congratulations, man. Like, and he had us going big time. Because oh, man. We, we, we thought that there was a giant whitetail laying yeah, on the ground. Some so. smoker that just showed yeah. up. And well, all I said was he had 18 or 19 inch G2s and flyers and splits, and he does. <laughs> we were on our way. <laughs> so, no, it's a real cool deer. Yeah, like, Jason's bugged me a lot to come for mule deer, come for mule deer, and it's during whitetail season that I can't, but. I finally got my first mule deer on my terms, like a whitetail. That's right. I filmed him in August. That's right. From a blind, we set up for him and we got him. So I was just <laughs> waiting to right. do it on my terms. That's right. That's right. Anyway, we'll go get him out of here and yeah. uh, get him cleaned up. Good but, shot. He sure didn't go far. Oh, he didn't go 15 <laughs> yards. Yeah. yeah. The whitetail is made at 40. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> If every hunt was successful, that success wouldn't be so sweet, and I'm still thankful for the opportunities I've had. And although I didn't take a whitetail, I did take a mule deer that I was more than happy with. And we feel completely honored to have been able to watch, film, and hunt a deer as incredible as the buck that we named the Big Show. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Canadian Whitetail.